Welcome to our translation of graphs part one. So we're just going to go over the uh, three graphs that we looked at the other day. So the first one was the cubic, y equals x cubed. Uh, notice that it passes through zero, zero, okay, and the, uh, the way the graph actually uh, is uh, looks. The next one was the exponential, which was y equals 2 to the x. I mean, it could be anything, 3 to the x, 4 to the x, but we focused on 2 to the x the other day. Uh, passing through 1 on the y-axis, and we talked about the x-axis being an asymptote, because that's what it approaches, but doesn't actually touch. The next one was the hyperbola, or the third one was the hyperbola, that's the 1 over x. And our x and y-axis are our um, asymptotes. So the graph on both sides approaches the x-axis, and it also approaches the y-axis. So today we're going to look at uh, translating the graph. So we're going to look at two different translations. The first one is when we affect the x. So when we affect the x, it shifts it left or right. So it shifts the original graph left or right, the amount that, we, um, uh, that it affects the x. So if it's f of x minus 3, it's going to shift the graph 3 to the right. So let's have a look at some examples. So the first one is y equals x minus 2 cubed, y equals 1 over x plus 3. So the first thing you need to be able to recognise is what the original graph was. So was it a cubic, hyperbola, exponential, or from the past, could even be a parabola. But we're going to just focus on those three that we looked at uh, in the first um, three, uh, the first part of this. So y equals x minus 2 cubed, it's a cubic curve. So it's to the power of 3, so it's a cubic. So we know what the original cubic looks like. And the effect on the x, we've got to work out if it's a shift left or right. So we let the x minus 2 equal to 0, so it's x equals 2. So we're going to shift that curve, the cubic curve, two places to the right. And so you can see the original in red passes through 0, 0, and we shift it 2 to the right. So our new curve, y equals x minus 2 cubed, moves now, and it passes through at 2 on the x-axis. If I want to find where it crosses the y-axis, well, we learnt that in a previous video, we let x equal 0. And 0 minus 2 is minus 2, all cubed is minus 8. So to pass through minus 8 on the y-axis. Let's have a look at the other one. y equals 1 over x plus 3. So we should recognise that this is a hyperbola. So it's the 1 over x. So remembering what that looks like, we then look at the effect on the x. Does it shift it left or right? So we let that x, the effect was the x plus 3. We let that equal to 0, so x equals minus 3. So we're going to take the original curve, 1 over x, and we're going to move it three places to the left. So the original one is in green. And you can see it approached the x-axis and the y-axis. Now we're moving the curve three to the left. You will notice that our y-axis, which was our asymptote, now becomes x equals minus three, that red dotted line. So we've shifted the entire curve three to the left. So it approaches minus 3 as our asymptote, x equals minus 3, but it still approaches the x-axis. We haven't actually done anything to the x-axis here. All right, second one, affecting the function itself. So this one shifts it up or down. So if we have the original function, so whether it's x cubed, 1 over x, or 2 to the x, and we add a number to it, or minus a number, we shift it up or down. So example, if we had a function, we added 4, the graph shifts up 4. So let's have a look at some examples. So y equals 2 to the x, and then we're going to minus 4 from it. y equals 1 over x, and then we're going to add 2. So first one, y equals 2 to the x minus 4. So we recognise that it's an exponential, 2 to the x. 
The effect on the function, does it shift it up or down? Well, it's minus 4. So that means that we move that original 2 to the x down 4 places. So a reminder, the red, the 2 to the x, approach the x-axis. So the x-axis was the asymptote. We're now going to move that down 4. So it now approaches minus 4. The point it passed through on the y-axis was 0, 1. Move it down 4, it now passes 0, minus 3. I can also find where it cuts the x-axis because I let y equal to 0. So I get 0 equals 2 to the x minus 4. If I add 4, 2 to the x equals 4, and 2 to the power of 2 is 4, so at x equals 2. So you can see we can solve that. We'll deal with that a little bit more in the lesson. So the second one, 1 over x plus 2. So once again, notice it's a hyperbola, 1 over x. Is the effect on the function uh, a shift up or down? As it is plus 2, that means we move it up 2. So you can see the red is the original. Approaches the x-axis, approaches the y-axis. The blue is the shift. It was up 2. So I've moved everything up 2. So my x-axis moves up 2 and now becomes, you can see the green dotted line. So my new asymptote becomes y equals 2. I've moved that two positions up. So that means that my hyperbola still approaches the y-axis, but now approaches the line y equals 2, that dotted line. We can find where the blue line crosses the x-axis, but once again, we can let y equal to 0. And if I did y uh, 0 equals 1 over x plus 2, I then take the uh, minus 2 across and I change, swap the x with the minus 2 and I can get x equals minus a half. And you can see that's where it crosses on the x-axis. Thank you.